Welcome to the Exploring Potential podcast, where we delve into the realm of unique and novel ideas within organizations. Join us as we uncover the driving force behind innovation and success by engaging in thought-provoking conversations and stories with some of the brightest minds in various fields. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us and welcome to the Exploring Potential podcast. I'm your host, Brett King. Today, we're going to cover a topic we've touched on in the past, but from a brand new angle, and that is leadership development. Specifically, we're going to talk about the implications of participation in development opportunities at all levels of an organization, from the front line all the way up to the boardroom. You see, we come across a lot of manager and training programs and sometimes even an executive training program, but honestly, most fall very short with regards to soft skills development. But that's for a whole other episode. What if we flipped this more targeted style of leadership development to create a shared development experience from the top to the bottom of an organization simultaneously? This is exactly what our friends at Flix Brewhouse have recently experimented with, and the results are fascinating, and I'm very excited to dive into those details with you. Before we jump fully in, I do want to take a moment to thank today's show sponsor, Today's episode of the Exploring Potential podcast is proudly presented by Cinetrain, providing the highest quality employee training, onboarding, and development solutions for cinemas across the U.S., Canada, and Latin America. Cinetrain helps cinemas attract and retain top talent, standardize onboarding and training, and increase revenue while decreasing costs. You can learn more at Cinetrain.com. Now, I am thrilled to welcome to the show Samantha Rickey, Director of Learning and Development at Flix Brewhouse. Samantha graduated from the University of Iowa in 2014 and quickly embarked on her career with Flix in January 2015 as the brand ambassador in Des Moines. In September 2016, she opened the Albuquerque location as the service manager. Samantha's passion for operations eventually led her to the Learning and Development Department in 2018 where she currently serves as the director of L&D since 2022. Outside of work, Samantha enjoys going to the lake, traveling, supporting the Hawkeyes, and enjoying time with her dogs, friends, and husband. Sam, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you here today. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, uh, I gave you a, a bit of a bio intro, but would you mind just giving us a quick background of your career journey and what brought you to where you are now? Yeah. Um, my, I think my journey is pretty unique because, um, like you mentioned, I've pretty much been with Flix um, since I graduated, which I also think it's unique. And I'm really lucky to um, c- kind of fell into this position and had the opportunity to grow with them. Um, before that, I um, worked in the service industry, uh, bartending, managing a bar um, all through college in Iowa City. Uh, so uh, I kind of learned my passion for operations early on, like 19 to 23. And then Flix, um, I just saw it on an Indeed that they were opening a, a movie theater that you could like have a beer in. And I just thought like that was the best idea ever. Um, and I also wanted to move, I was still in Iowa City, wanted to move back to the Des Moines area because uh, my sister had just had my first nephew. And it was just like, I'm going to just apply for this really cool sounding job and I get to go back home. And it worked out. And then uh, stayed in Des Moines a couple years, and then it brought me to Albuquerque, New Mexico, of all places. And then I uh, went to our Round Rock office for a quick little time, and then I came back to Albuquerque. So, um, yeah, it was really unique. I prob- never would have uh, lived in New Mexico if it wasn't for Flix, and now I can't imagine leaving. So, um, yeah, I'm really fortunate in my journey. I think it's been really fun, and I want to stay with Flix as long as I can. <laughs> I love that. They're, uh, they must be doing something right. And we're definitely going to talk yeah. about that. Um, you know, the fact that you've spent a majority or, or almost your whole career with mm-hmm. Flix tells me that they're doing something right to keep somebody like, like yourself around. What, so, so we know that about them and, and the company. What else should we know about Flix Brewhouse just in general? Yeah. Um, so we are America's only dine-in cinema brewery. 
So we make our own beer at every single location. So it's fresh right off the tap, made in house beer. We give all of our local brewers um, their creative they make their own local beers at each location. We also have national seasonals that you can have at any flicks anywhere. Um, we operate in six different states. We currently have 10 locations and we're opening our 11th in Albuquerque uh, later this year. So I'm super, super excited to open one at home. <laughs> uh, that'll be really excited. Um, yeah. And I think we just um, are a really fun, unique concept. Um, we have are a we have great food we make our own beer and we're a movie theater so can't you can't get that anywhere else i mean that's a key combo right there right <laughs> yeah you know we we see other other cinemas definitely serving beer but who can say they brew their own you know fresh ready on tap that's yeah. awesome and friday nights our brewers are behind the bar if you want to chat beer um they're there. You can talk to them. Um, we like to, even though, you know, we have 10 locations all across the country. Um, when you're in one of our theaters, it feels very, very local to the beer scene in that town. I can, um, I can testify for that. Uh, I did have the the pleasure recently of visiting, uh, at least one of your locations on a, on a recent trip. And yeah, you feel, you feel at home. It feels new. It feels cool. Like it's a, uh, I'm going to get made fun of for going using this slang, but it's a vibe, right? <laughs> it is a vibe. I love it. It's a whole vibe. I'm definitely going to gonna catch some stuff from at least my team uh, and probably many more people for that. But <laughs> but it's true. It really is true. And I encourage if you haven't been to uh, to get the full flicks experience for sure. Um, so back to the topic at hand, what Samantha prompted the integration of a thorough leadership development program at Flix. Yeah. So um, we've always had, you know, MIT or manager in training. We have that program for the hard skills, um, but we've never really gotten into, you know, the people skills, the leadership skills and that. And we needed something tangible that, you know, I could give to a new manager and say, hey, this is this is what we also want you to work on when we are done teaching you how to press the buttons. So um, we knew it was something we needed. And we um, kind of we revamped our manager development program that ties in with our M MIT program. And we were like, what are we missing? OK, it's this piece. Um, and I think it was more prominent that than ever than we needed it um, coming out of COVID. As everybody knows, like the movie industry, we, we were closed some locations for over a year um, because we just couldn't open. So um, people had to go elsewhere and get jobs. And um, luckily for us, we actually did bring a lot of people back, but um, those people were moved into positions they had never worked before. So general managers were becoming regional managers. Um, managers were becoming directors. Myself, you know, um, you know, really great server trainers wanted to come back and we, you know, we were like, we have this supervisor role. Do you want to try that? And so um, we, for the first time, we had a lot of um, maybe like freshmen people in their roles. And we were like, you know, yesterday you were a server, today you're a supervisor. So how can we help them not only learn, you know, the inventory, the labor costs, the food costs, all of that, but like how to be a good leader in our buildings um, because we, we're really proud of our culture. We want you to want to come to work. Um, and I think that starts with like the people in the building, you know? So we were like, how do we do that? And so um, we stumbled upon a great program that we're now rolling out through Cinetrain, the advanced manager program. Love it. Love it. And, and what I love about this is, it speaks to something that I think is very common in this industry that, that we certainly encourage and that I think um, really is beneficial, which is promoting from within um, and, you know, supporting. I think what you all are what you all are doing is the critical piece that not everybody does is supporting that promotion, because, uh, you know, if I understood you correctly, the, the reasoning behind creating this leadership program or rolling this leadership program out is you had a lot of people getting promoted from within just right. by necessity. Right. And, you know, what we often talk about, and and if you, anybody is listening to this podcast and has listened to other episodes, they know we've talked about this at length. Just because you're a really great server does not just automatically translate to manager. Would you agree? Right. I 100% agree. I say that all the time. Um, and 
I agree 100%. And it, it, but it doesn't mean that that person can't get there, right? Yes. So we need to have tools in place that they can use to get there if they want to. Some people just want to be an awesome server forever, and that's great. But some people really want to get to that next step. And I think it's really cool that in my position, I was allowed by my bosses and whoever to like find a tool and dive into this and create a program that works for us to give people those tools, should they choose to use them. I always say you get as as much into it as you are out of it as you put into it, right? It's not just completing courses or reading a quick book and saying, okay, I did it. You know, you really have to live it to gain something from it. Right. Right. Absolutely. It's yeah. I like that. You get what you put in, you know, you're you, but the biggest difference is that Flix is providing the tools. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's where I think, you know, again, a lot of organizations might fall a little short. They, they want to do the same things they want to promote from within, but there's not that extra step of retooling. Instead, they're you know, putting a trained usher into a leadership of people position without those extra skills. And and I love what you said. These are learnable. These are teachable if mm-hmm. they want to learn them. So mm-hmm. kudos to you. Kudos to the organization for supporting that program. Now, one thing that you are doing that I believe is a bit unique, and that's why I'm just so excited to talk to you about it, is your executives are participating in mm-hmm. the rollout of this development program. Why are they participating? How did that come to be? Uh, we well, we said I I also believe like in the philosophy, and I think most of our uh, executives also believe I wouldn't want to ask somebody to do something that I'm not willing to do, you know. So um, I, it was kind of just a no brainer. Yeah. Like if if the units are going to do this from general manager to supervisor, yeah. then at the queue, which is what we call our home office, like we're also going to do it as well, and. I think we also, we need it, right? Like there's not, there's no one that need, doesn't need to work on their professional development or um, just working better with others. So it was, I I really wasn't even a question. It was like, okay, we have this new program. We're all going to do it. And then it was just a question of how do we want to do this? So we get the most impact out of it. You know, coming from someone that is constantly pushing out new training training courses and training posts and updating procedures and that, like, I know the like, oh, they assigned another course. I'm just going to click through it. You know what I mean? I said, like, before we just, we have this program before we just push it out there, like, let's strategically come up with a way that's going to have the best impact. So we decided um, we're all doing it together um, on like a time frame basis. So we do it in different sections um, every two weeks. And instead of just, you know, complete the course in two weeks, it's the first week, complete the course. The next week, we're going to have a team meeting, whether that's your department or your unit managers, whoever. And then for that at the beginning of the week, and then that whole week, or maybe into the next week, we're going to have like a goal individually or as a team, like based on emotional intelligence or influence or whatever topic we just kind of learned about. Um, so that's how we chose to do it because I know from experience, if I turn on a course, they're just, you, some people will just click through it and say, okay, I've done it. It's complete. You know? Um, and I just, we, we brainstorm for a while. Like how do we prevent that from happening? So right. this is our attempt to do that. Um, and I, so far so good. I think it's going really well. It, it sounds like it from the, from the feedback that you've shared, what, what is the impact? You, you, maybe this is just an opinion or maybe you've actually seen this, but I'm curious what the impact of having the executives also going through this is having on the rest of the company. Because again, I feel like that's a bit unique sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean to put people in boxes, but sometimes the executive level, there might be this feeling of we've got all the skills we need. Look at where we are. Right. And uh, regardless of whether or not, you know, um, that's true at the Flix level of, of whether those skills exist, the executive team embraced this. What is the impact that it's had throughout the rest of the company to know that, you know, it sort of starts at the top? Yeah, well, definitely for me, I've seen it. Um, and I think, I mean, this is a part of it, but I think it's motivating for me to know that like my bosses and the people above me are at like doing this on the same level as me, like we're doing this together and we're talking about it together. Um, And that's just, it means a lot more to me 
that it's just not something they're asking me to do. They're also doing it. Um, and I think that's just a motivating thing. Um, and I really respect that from my leaders. Um, in the um, in the unit wise, I've really seen um, some of our regionals have really like dove into it and they are like coming, they're like experts and they'll message me on the side. Like, did you, did you see this one slide? It was my favorite. This really made me think of this and stuff. And like, we, I can just really see we've got people's wheels turning of just like, we're not always just focused on the labor and the Emmet levels and the movie schedule and all of the the day-to-day things that are on our minds. But now, you know, we've got thinking people thinking about how to be better leaders and better communicators in their buildings. And I just, I like just from afar, you know, I don't get to be in every unit every day, but I definitely see like just a cool conversation starting about it. And I also have seen like, if, if you're not, if you're not like getting on board with it, you're kind of feeling left out. Like, you know Mm, what I mean? Like, Like this is the direction we're going in. And if you're not, you know, ready to become a better leader or at least starting to think about it and like getting into this program, it's kind of like, mm, maybe this isn't the place for me, which that's okay. It's not for everybody, but I think it's really cool that, you know, I see regional managers that are super smart with operations and stuff now, like really focused on the development part of it. And I think that's just a really cool thing I've seen. We haven't, I don't have any like numbers yet because we haven't quite finished. Um, sure the the whole entire program but um me and our talent acquisition person have like already talked of like okay like this is when we started this is when we end we'll see what kind of like numbers we can get from this to see like what's happened as far as retention um and like um guest satisfaction scores have they gone up and like just what can we see from this timeline to this timeline like how has this impacted our team so i'm super um looking forward to those results um once we can dive into it yeah, that's an important part is is the measurement piece um, to be able to show, you know, I think you're getting a um, a sense of where things are at just based on the conversations you're you're seeing and hearing. And I think, you know, you had you had mentioned, you know, getting people to think about this, but also, you know, you're getting them to take action on it. That's what I love about the way that you've rolled this program out is it's not just like take this course, like you said, it's take this course. And then we're going to talk about it and talk about how we're putting things into action. And now you have people proactively reaching out to you unprompted saying, hey, did you see this? What I think it applies to this thing. Yeah, for sure. That's and really even great. yesterday, um, as you know, we just rolled a whole entire new POS system. And with anything new, like change is scary. You know, everybody's like, this is different now. What do I do in this situation? You know, so I had a little impromptu kind of workshop, like, um, yesterday at um, 9 a.m. And it was optional for any manager that wanted to come say, hey, I've been getting requests. This has been confusing. I want to clear some things up. And, you know, I had about 15 people in attendance, which is pretty good for like, hey, tomorrow, 9 a.m., you want to meet me? (laughs) Um, But in that conversation, it even led to, um, you know, like, oh, this is a new thing we're doing with our servers and it's causing a little friction for them. And I'm like, yeah, that's when we really like as managers, we've got to think about like our influence and our motivation Mm. and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we've started like using terms, you know, that we've reviewed um, as a team in these courses. So like, um, I think it's really starting to like change our vocabulary and kind of how we can approach really hard things like change and um, friction with our team members. So um, it's really cool to see. That's, I think, one of the more valuable instances where soft skills become incredibly impactful is instances of change and, you know, managing that change. That's when true leaders really show up for their teams. So that makes perfect sense. And that's very encouraging, you know, that you're you're seeing that firsthand and using those terms firsthand. Let's. um you know, for those that, that aren't familiar with AMP, you don't have to name every single thing, but but would you mind just sort of summarizing, like, what are some of these specific skills that that you and your teams are, are working on developing? Um, oh, that's a tough one. So I think and it starts in emotional intelligence, right? And I honestly, like, that's kind of come the big umbrella of the whole thing is like, how are we handling these situations? So I think a lot we're just focusing on how we can communicate better mm-hmm. to to be more productive right um so a specific skill oh i feel like um 
totally put you on the spot there. You you're, did. You're, your dog has an answer. Possibly. I know. I'm so sorry. I really thought he was not going to. Oh do no, that. we're we are animal friendly here. <laughs> um, so let me think for a second. So you had mentioned emotional intelligence, which, like you said, that's kind of an umbrella of so much. Mm-hmm. Um, you talked about, you know, influence uh, being, you know, that's an area where as a leader, especially during times of change, right, your ability to influence your staff, that's a critical skill. Um, so again, I, you know, I, I wasn't asking you to name the entire <laughs> curriculum. That's that's so unfair. But just, you know, I, I think um, you so you finished emotional intelligence, you finished, I believe, influence. Where are you at? Like, what's next? Or what are you working on right now? Um, the The home office team is on communication skills which I believe is like the kind of the second uh, module. And then the operations team is quite ahead. We just did conflict. Is that? Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I, I think so. I'll be honest with you <laughs> in that if you put me on the spot and asked me to recite the whole curriculum, I couldn't do it either. Um, so <laughs> no, well, that's great. I, I just wanted to give a, a better idea for folks that like, you know, when we're talking about leadership development skills, I just wanted to get a little more specific of like, in this case, these are some of the things that Samantha and her team are going through. Right. So I, I, you know, I feel like we've covered that. And it sounds like, you know, in your rollout, some people are at different places. You've mentioned some specific things like conflict resolution. That's a huge one. It doesn't matter where you work or the age of your colleagues. Like conflict resolution is a soft skill uh, the ability to manage conflict is a is a soft skill that is absolutely critical wherever mm-hmm. you are. Um, yeah. In fact, I dare say more critical post COVID uh, than it was even beforehand. It just seems like that's, there's a little more friction. I think for sure. And so how we are doing it along with, so we do the two weeks, right? You, you do the course and then you have the meeting. And then a part of our manager development program is our one-to-one and development days. So the GM of every unit um, carves out an hour or two meeting once a quarter with each of their supervisors. So it's a, it's a bit, it's like a once a week thing for the GM. Um, wow. But in those meetings, they have specific like action plans that they're going to work on that tie in specifically to whatever section we're on in the AMP program. So if it was conflict management, for sure, it would be like, okay, we are going to work on guest recovery, right? So we're going to use our care model and all of that. And like, this is your focus this week. And then the GM will either do like a development day where like we're side to side. So I'm running my zone with you. And then we're focusing on every, hey, the guest in 4 Delta 5 wants to talk to a manager. You and me are going to go talk to that manager. And like, this is what we're working on today. Today, you are the guest service manager. That is your focus. And like, we're going to do that. So when like you ask like what specifically are doing, they're really doing it like individually. Um, right. Each manager has their own focus. Which, right. So, and I don't see that a lot because <laughs> I'm not in the buildings, but like yep. there, we have a form it's documented and all of that. Um, and I think that's really cool because a lot of these young managers too, like one, it, I, I think it's really cool that, we're like, hey, we not only want you to be really good at your job, like we want you to develop personally. And yes. your GM is going to carve out a time to just be shoulder to shoulder with you during that time. And for a young, young supervisor that was a server yesterday, like that, that's big. That could be really influential to them of like, okay, like we they're focused on me today. I have a voice. They're going to hear what I have to say and they're going to work with me, Yes, um, which I think has been the best part of this. And I want to call out something else I f- that I feel like is very critical to the way that this is being rolled out. And what I what that is, is you're putting it into practice right away. And that's where like your your breaking up of the content is is a really great strategy. And this is what I really wanted to call out for our audience, regardless of what leadership development program you have. You know, hey, mm-hmm. if you like what what Sam's saying, check out AMP for, <laughs> for Cinetrain for sure. But it doesn't matter. Whatever it is. You just hit on one of the most important parts of actually making sure this stuff goes in and is retained and then turns into action, which is put it into practice. Mm -hmm. So one, you know, one strategy that we've used. So we we have corresponding like workshops to these AMP modules, for instance. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we do is 
at the end of the first workshop, you have tangible homework of like, how are you going to, uh, you know, you have to come back to the next workshop and you have to demonstrate a way in which you had to flex emotional intelligence, a way in which you had to diffuse conflict, right? So there's sort of this requirement of like, put it into your actual job, not just learning about it in theory. And I really wanted to highlight that because you're clearly doing that at a very high level. And it that's what makes the difference. Like that's what makes me not surprised at all that you're getting the results that you're getting. And when I say results, I might be getting ahead of myself, but the fact that y'all are using the language, that you have people coming to you and using the language and you're, you're tying all that in, those are results, right? That means this stuff is sticking. Yeah. And that doesn't happen at that that uptake doesn't happen at that level if you're not doing what you're doing, which is put this into practice. You've learned it, but now mm-hmm. you need to put this into actual practice. Right. Yeah, that's that's uh thanks for letting me get on a soapbox there. But yeah. from a from a learning design standpoint, like that's what we want, right? It can't end with just consuming the content. Mm-hmm. There's gotta be a way that we're challenging people to put it out into the real world. And yeah. by you making that a part of your program you're ensuring success. You're ensuring you're getting results. Yeah. We're already, and we're already talking about like when the courses run out, okay, what's our next step? Because it's a journey. Like you're not going to do two weeks of emotional intelligent and be emotionally intelligent. Like these, you could do two works of learning labor costs and being really good at it and be really good at labor costs going forward. But the soft skill side of it is so hard. I think one, because you have to turn around and look in the mirror and be like, okay, this is on me, right? Like this is how I am presenting myself. And I think that's really hard. And I think it's a journey. Like you never, I I don't think the CEO, I don't think the owner, anybody can ever really, like, I don't know if you'll ever really be like, I am emotionally intelligent. I can resolve any conflict. (laughs) I've reached the end. (laughs) Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's an end. Um, Right. So yeah, it's going to be interesting how, um, you know, we've brainstormed a couple of things, definitely workshops and stuff we want to keep doing. Um, how we're doing it now is every other Monday, uh, the regionals, myself, our talent acquisition person meet with the GMs and like do a pre-meeting for whatever course we're on. Mm-hmm. Um, and our regional that's been holding those meetings has done a great job. Um, and then we kind of, uh, we create a PowerPoint that they can use in their meeting. They can edit it however they want to. Um, a PowerPoint or whatever they want to do for their meeting activity. So we kind of pre-do it with the GMs and then they trickle it down through their teams. Um, and and we were like, okay, these meetings are going to end on this date. And we're like, no, we want to keep like these meetings going, even though the courses are done. So, right. you know, we're already like, okay, like she'll, what we'll probably decide, like, what are we going to revisit for this meeting? And then that, what does that look like going forward when it's not necessarily attached to the program? Because now we've completed it. And then I also had to um, come up with, so we're all doing it together if you were already at Flix, right? But we still have MITs and new corporate support staff coming in and stuff. So, you know, what's the cadence for them? So um, that program, we still um, are having them do like two weeks on each course. Mm -hmm. Um, um, But they're just kind of doing it at their own pace, starting from the emotional intelligence and working through. Um, So I think... um, the timing it out is really key because with the new MITs, I'm like, well, I'm not going to just turn it on for them because we didn't do that. So how does that look? So right. um, it takes a little managing on my part with the GMs of like, okay, your supervisors on this, you know, part, they're three weeks behind us or whatever. So, right. Yeah. We're still learning the functions, but it's going really well. When you're paying attention to, to the rollout, I think that's one of the most important things too, is you're paying attention to like what's happening. And it sounds like you're adjusting as well. And the other thing I heard that I want to call out for for our audience as well is this is so heavily supported at the top of the organization. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like one thing you had just said that stuck out to me is like you're you're creating a PowerPoint deck for then supervisors to use. I believe it's supervisors, um, but for others to use basically to present mm-hmm. to their teams based on that. Like yeah. that is support from the top where mm-hmm. programs can like this can often fail is thinking, okay, we got it. Um, push the go button. Now everybody has access and everybody should be totally awesome leaders by the end of, (laughs) you know, by the end of all this and what you all are showing again, you know, and I'll be very interested to hear the, the, um, quantifiable data at the end of this, but 
what I'm hearing from you from a qualitative standpoint is like, there are differences and there's an impact that's being made. And again, that doesn't happen without the support that you all are given from the top of the organization down. That's exciting. What, speaking of impact, now you're still in it, right? Um, mm-hmm. So let's talk from a broad level of whether it's impact that you've seen or just the anticipated impact. What do you feel by going through this program and doing this, the, all the things you're doing related to leadership development, what do you foresee as the impact kind of throughout the organization? Yeah. For sure. Definitely, I think one we're anticipating is retention. Um, mm. As you, I, we've expressed, we love promoting from within. If we like you and you're doing a great job, we want to keep you. Like, keep them in there. Um, and for a number of reasons. Everybody knows why you want to retain a team member. Um, and I think um, I would, if you have a leader you look up to and you want to be with at work, you're going to stay at your job. So I think that's that's a big one is retention. But then it, I think it also um, trickle into our guest experience and like what Flix is all about. Like we really, really focus on hospitality. Um, we ha- we're not going to get servers, like servers in the theaters. We're here to help you. We got a call light system. Um, and I think in, in anticipating if a team member is having a good experience at work, they're going to create a good experience for their guest. Now, if they are working with a manager they don't get along with, um, you know, have a bad interaction with, and then they go greet a guest two minutes later, that guest won't have as good of an experience as if a team member that's having a great day at work had greeted them. Um, So I think, I mean, when you get into it, I mean, it could really affect your bottom line if your leaders aren't leading the building well. I hypothesize. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's a strong hypothesis um, because you're talking about internally, right? Keeping people around. Hiring is not cheap. Um, Mm -hmm. I think I just shared the other day um, that it costs almost $5,000 to to hire somebody. And that's not their salary. That's not their benefits. That's the time it takes the resources internally to hire a new employee. So when you talk about reducing turnover, you're talking about significant savings to, Mm -hmm. to the bottom line. And then I completely agree with your take that you know, a happy employee creates a happy guest experience. There's Mm -hmm. a direct impact to that. And if you have happy guests, again, that's tied directly to the bottom line, right? Yeah, for sure. And yes, it's just, and there's also something to be said about just having someone that knows how to flix. Like we're a unique concept. We got the brewery going on, we got a kitchen. And I like to say we have like nine hidden restaurants. You know, we'll, we'll drop, we will seat 400 people in one hour. And I don't know if you've ever experienced wow. that, but it's a lot. Okay. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot. And then we turn off the lights and make it dark <laughs> and like, you can't really talk to them. So like, there's something to be said about retaining our team members on the front lines, especially that just know how to flix because you, you got to learn it. You got to learn to duck between the rows and communicate with a guest non-verbally because you don't want to disrupt their movie right. experience. Um, so there's just something for us, I think, especially of just like keeping someone around that does a great job of flexing. Like we want to foster their abilities and help them grow within the company because it's a lot. Like it takes a while to learn how to flex <laughs> for sure. I love that it. It's a verb like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> flexing. I love it. That's like something that, you know, many other companies that aren't flex need to start flexing. Right. <laughs> I love that. (laughs) Now, what are, you know, you're clearly doing things in such a a positive and and the right way from my, in my humble opinion with this stuff, Mm -hmm. what are the risks of not doing what you're doing, of not developing these skills? What, what are the risks that come with not being intentional and not going through these exercises that you're going through right now? I think a risk, especially with rolling a new program, was it can backfire if you're not thinking about who you're rolling it to. So um, like for this specifically, I was really worried that we're putting something else on the managers that, like I said, already have a lot going on. <laughs> um, so we wanted to be really intentional with rolling it and um, delivering it in a way that's like, hey, this is for your personal development. Like, 
yes, this is a required thing we, we are going to do together, um, but it's for you to put what you want into it, right? Um, and I think that was our delivery on it, which I think was really good. Um, oh, I had another one for like team members too of um, how it could backfire, but <laughs> that's what I think of like... We were, like I said, when we got the program, we weren't just, we didn't just like open the gates. So we were like, how yeah. are we going to do this? So it's impactful because it could have, it could have backfired, you know, like, oh, another training course. And then, the, and then they become disengaged, right? Like, yep. I don't want to over, overwhelm someone to a point where like, I already have to do this with my job and now you want me to do this. And okay, then now I'm just, I'm just checked out. That's going to trickle down to my team members, which will eventually trickle down to my guests. And then I have more turnover in my buildings. I have people doing their job that don't care. So my building starts to fall apart. Um, I think it can have a lot of bad impact if you don't influence the team on why um, this is a good a good step forward for us as flicks. And I think if we were in like a really unique spot where like we came back from COVID, the movie numbers were starting to trend more like 2019, which was kind of like the last normalcy we knew in the movie right. industry between COVID and the strikes and everything. And we were, you know, we're coming back and we're like, oh, okay, we're here to stay. We got this, you know, we got our, our team staffed back up and all of that. And like the, it was a really cool point to be like, okay, the buildings are running. We're doing good. Let's like work on our people. Like, right. I think that, like the fact that, um, you know, our leaders said, you know what, you guys are doing a great job. Let's help develop you like on your personal development that you, you can take these skills everywhere. You can't take <laughs> ducking in a theater and communicating during a movie. That's not always going to relate to every job, but right. like, your soft skills, your leadership skills, your emotional intelligence, that's going to stay with you throughout your journey, no matter where you go. So I think and that's really cool. I think that's brilliant. And and Flix is investing in that. Whether or not people are st going to stay with the company, they've decided we are going to invest in this and in our people. And the irony or perhaps the non-surprising result is people actually stick around is yeah hey, they do who would have thought right <laughs> i think we have most of our general managers are, are from pre-covid like wow. which is which is crazy to me for like a movie theater like we were closed for a long time and then they were like hey i'm back you know they went and managed other restaurants and whatever they had to do i was a teacher during covid and then i i came back because they, they were like flix is opening their doors uh, yes please i will come back so we'll come back uh, to flixing. Yes. I think we always kind of had, we've always had a good culture in my opinion. Um, I've always liked to be here no matter what flix I'm working in. And um, I think we're just continuing to build on that by um, rolling out this program and really focusing on our people. That intentionality um, and the culture behind it, that's absolutely, that's why you're seeing the success. Um, and that just shows the importance of culture within an organization, which is a whole other podcast that we'll have to <laughs> have to do at another time. Um, <laughs> Samantha, this has been really, really valuable. It, before I move on, is there anything else that you'd like to add um, that our audience might benefit from hearing just on this subject overall? Um, I think we already touched on it a little bit, but um, as someone that's not an expert by any means, I feel like I'm honestly at the beginning of my journey with my own personal and professional development. Um, I have to remind myself all the time that it is a journey um, and and I will never be perfect, but as long, I think it's a win when even I'm having a conversation or struggling to influence someone or getting a little frustrated and, and I'm a, I'm a hot person. I I'm passionate and that can come. And I'm, I'm realizing, you know, that can come off like really strong sometimes, but the fact that I'm even triggered to like, okay, let me reword this. I'm, it's not you. I'm just really passionate about this. Like me having those triggers and those thoughts in my mind is success. And I know that I'm, I'm constantly striving to get better. And it's not easy. Looking in your mirror, in the mirror and thinking about your actions is a lot harder than rolling a program and talking about all these key tools you can use. We can talk about it all day long. Putting it into practice is really hard, um, but it's, it's just a journey and you just got to keep looking in the mirror and that's the hardest part. But 
um, it's, it's going well. I like it. I, I am enjoying my own new journey on professional development. <laughs> I love that. And, and I think you said it perfectly because it is a journey. I think you said it earlier. Nobody ever arrives when it comes to personal professional development. We're always working on it. I mean, I remember, so I had the pleasure of, of having you join me for a panel on emotional intelligence at the dine in summit, uh, you know, just recently. And, you know, so that wasn't the first time I have taught emotional intelligence. Right. But the irony was, you know, I was working on that presentation and working on, you know, some of the questions. And I remember like, getting called out from one of my kids on like, I, I was very short with them. And, and I had previously like explained sort of, you know, as much as you can explain to an almost 10 year old, what emotional intelligence was, but he called me out. He called me out on it. He was like, dad, that wasn't very like emotionally intelligent. And like, he wasn't wrong. And that was, you know, first of all, like kudos to him, like, I, okay, proud dad moment, but also like, Hey, like, watch it. I'm the one teaching this. But then <laughs> there's that reminder, right, is you could be teaching this stuff and you have still not arrived. I have not even close to arrived, right? Like this right. is, you said it perfectly in that this is a journey and it's a journey for us personally, no matter what level we're at at a company. And it's a journey for our employees and being intentional and supporting that journey. That's where the difference comes in. And that's why Flix is seeing the results they're seeing. And, you know, you're having these conversations that you're having. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Samantha, thank you so much for taking the time um, out of your very busy schedule. I know how busy you are. Um, <laughs> this is the part of the show where I do like to just pause, give you a few moments to plug whatever is important to you right now. So it could be a company, idea, initiative, whatever it is, yeah. the floor is yours. Um, well, we're uh, ramping up to open a new Flix that I'm super excited about that I mentioned. So if you're in the Albuquerque area, AB2 is coming in hot. Or if you're in a location that has Flix, check us out. Um, yeah, we are, we're doing lots of new and cool things um, at Flix. So I'm focused on that. I'm really excited. Uh, personally, we got, I got my Iowa Hawkeyes playing in the Big Ten tournament. I'm ready. The women's team, I'm ready for, I'm ready for March Madness. I'm home from all my yes. work travel. I'm going to hang out with my dogs and my husband and watch some basketball for the month of March. Um, I love it. I love it. And <laughs> dare I say the women's uh, teams might be more exciting this year. Um, well, deservedly so. I tell you what, I'm really excited about it. I really, I'm one of those people. I never watched women basketball. Even when I was a young women's basketball player, it was, and now I'm, I am like into it, man. So I think it's really cool. It's the same at our house. We're, we're all over it. I, I think it's, there's nothing but good things coming from that. So I love it. Well, thank you, Sam, uh, for your time today. It's always a pleasure when we get to speak, whether it's on a panel, a podcast. This won't be the last time that I, I try to wrangle you for something like this, I'm sure. I always enjoy our conversations. Thank you, Brett. I really do, too. Awesome. Well, I also want to take a moment to uh, thank our audience, our listeners and viewers for tuning in to today's episode. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you are getting value from this content. You can subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever it is you get your podcasts these days. Please do give us a rating and review while you're there. We just want to know how we're doing. And you can also like, watch, and subscribe on YouTube. Visit exploringpotential.com for more information about our team and the work we do. And visit cinetrain.com for more information on what we do specifically in the movie theater space. And with that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.